How's everyone doing? Today I'll be doing a random horror Blu-ray shelf video. I recently did my uh, first one of it, and now I'm going to do my second one. I have all my horror Blu-rays right here on this six and a half foot IKEA bookcase, which got a little bit damaged during moving. Still upset about that, and some other damaged other bookcases as well. Uh, yeah, nothing is still organized for any of my Blu-rays, uh, but this is all horror. I have that all separated, but they're not alphabetized yet or anything like that. So I figured I'd go ahead and show you a random horror Blu-ray shelf. This will be number two. And if you've seen these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. But now let's go ahead and check out the movies. The Blu-rays. And this is the second shelf. I did the first shelf last time. And there's some of the things I have up on the top right there. I got these two. They're Bust Banks from Diamond Select Toys. On that, I don't use them as banks. I'm just using them as display pieces. They're kind of like a vinyl, rubbery kind of feel to them. But they look awesome. And I think it was a great price for both of them. Great detailing for the price as well. And the Strain set, which I love the heck out of that TV show. The Master Bust right there. And then this V for Vendetta set right here, which has the V mask. Not horror, but I just thought it would look cool up there. Uh, eventually, I'll put all the horror things up here. But let's get into the, the second shelf. First up are two releases from Film Detective, the restored classics. I think these might be both uh, public domain titles. I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure the bad is. Uh, Bucket of Blood right here, directed by Roger Corman, starring Dick Miller, kind of parodying uh, how absurd the art world can be, but uh, very entertaining. At least I thought it was, just from that kind of a parody aspect of it and kind of poking fun at it. And next up is The Bat with Vincent Price. Uh, this also stars Endora from um, Bewitched and also Darla from Our Gang, The Little Rascals. Uh, this one was actually really enjoyable. I love the heck out of this one. Kind of a serial killer mystery with a heist and a spooky old house. Definitely recommend that one. Next up, is Jeepers Creepers. I got this all signed up, which I love the heck out of this movie. One of my favorite recent uh, American horror movies. And their Scream Factory just announced that they're going to be releasing one and two with new artwork. And I am going to be picking those up because the artwork looks amazing and I am a fan of the film. Hopefully there will be some extra special features in there, some new ones. But love that movie. The Creeper definitely deserves a full franchise. And hopefully Cathedral will be coming out soon. Next up is Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which I was able to get signed up by the Chiodo Brothers. This is just a cheesy, crazy, fun movie. And basically the title explains the whole plot of the movie. Uh, this is one I grew up watching all the time. Love this movie so much. They're making a sequel to this coming out, uh, I think in a couple years is when it's slated. I'll be checking that out for sure. Again, uh, the Cotton Candy Cocoons, uh, the popcorn, guns, uh, all the different things that happen in this movie are just so outrageous and so funny. Knock your block off, shadow puppets of the dinosaur. The pizza part was really funny too. I just love that movie. Uh, Livid, this is a French horror movie, which is an amazing film, but the ending kind of went three different ways. Um, that was the only criticism I have about it, but still an excellent film. Very moody and creepy and atmospheric, and it's from the directors who also uh, directed Inside, which is my favorite extreme French horror movie. And this is a region free release right here. You can look for it on eBay, look for this cover right here. And I have to thank Beyond the Realms for making a video about this Blu-ray in particular being region free, because I know a bunch of the other releases are region locked. Next up is Life Force, love this movie. Outer Space Vampires with a super hot check right there. Uh, really great effects, great cast in here as well. Uh, Kathy Picard in here. <laughs> I know this edition right here is out of print because of the slip cover is the first release of it and it goes for a ridiculous money. I remember seeing like 75, 80 bucks for this, crazy. But love the movie, thankfully I got it when it first came out. Directed by Toby Hooper, of course. And next up is another Blu-ray that is out of print, The Relic, right here, with Penelope Ann Miller and Tom Sizemore. I just recently found out this was out of print. I always enjoyed this one. I remember watching this a lot growing up as a kid. And uh, surprising that that's out of print, actually. A uh, little Shop of Horrors, the original right here with Jack Nicholson. This is the black and white and also has the colored version. I prefer the black and white. Next up is Lords of Salem. This is the Walmart exclusive with the CD sampler with the lenticular cover right there. Love the heck out of this film. Um, the only thing is, again, the ending 
I didn't love that. That was a detractor for me, but everything else was like a masterpiece for me. Great uh, witch horror movie. Next up is Bloody Knuckles. This is from uh, Artsploitation Films. This is a fantastic horror comedy movie with a detached hand, kind of like idle hands. Uh, it has an artist right here, comic book artist, and it also deals with like freedom of speech. This is so much fun. I highly recommend the heck out of this one. Pure horror comedy entertainment. Next up is Freaks of Nature. This is another uh, horror comedy movie. Very interesting. It's a world where there's zombies and vampires and werewolves. Oh my. And it's basically uh, in this one town. That's the town that created the Riblet. And aliens come down. And they all have to decide to join together to fight off the aliens. And it's set in the, the high school right here. So it's kind of like a coming of age. There's a romance as well. Uh, great cast in there. Look at all those people right there. A lot of fun, very entertaining. Next up is Sleepaway Camp. Classic right here, that ending still gets me. And I was able to get this signed up as well. There is Felissa Rose, signed right in the middle. And I like that old school artwork, but the new school artwork is pretty cool as well. And I think Scream Factory is absolutely killing it with their releases. Next up is the 25th anniversary edition of Remote Control from Jeff Lieberman, who also directed Just Before Dawn, the prototypical backwards slasher, one of my all-time favorite slashers. And I think you could only get this on his website at the time. I'm not sure if he still has them available, but very cool that he signed it up as well. Next up is Plan the Vampires, directed by Mario Bava. This always kind of reminded me of a, like a Star Trek episode or even a Twilight Zone episode. And next up is The Seasoning House. This movie was definitely crazy. Uh, this one, I didn't love the ending to it as well as another thing. I'm kind of picky when it comes to it. Endings can make or break a movie. Uh, she walks into that house and there's no way she couldn't have missed that one person there. But this one definitely had some really good tension, very gritty and very good uh, revenge movie. Next up is Sector 7. You know what? I'm not going to talk about every single movie because this is already becoming a long video. But Sector 7 right there. Uh, decent Asian monster horror movie. Uh, the houses that October built. Loved the concept. Wasn't a huge fan of the movie. And again, I hated the ending. Uh, found footage. But I love the idea behind this where they're trying to find the most extreme haunted house out there. And then they didn't utilize these creepy uh, doll mask people enough either. Uh, the next three are the Lost Boys movies. I want to get the steelbook for the original Lost Boys. I know there is one for it. Probably doesn't have interior artwork, but still. And then the Lost Boys, The Tribe, and then The Thirst. I didn't see the latest one. I can't remember which is which. And I saw the second one, which I hated it. Uh, but at the time, these all came. I bought this on the, all three on eBay from the same seller, and it was like dirt cheap. I was like, why the heck not? I was looking to just get the original at the time, and I was like, all right. So I think for all three shipped, it was like 10 bucks, so why not? Uh, but I still need to see the third one. But the second one, oh, garbage. Uh, next up is Lovely Molly right here from the makers of Blair Witch Project and Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, this one right here was completely creepy and atmospheric. I love the ending to this one, and Eduardo Sanchez. I am not a fan of the Blair Witch Project. Uh, I know everybody loves it, but I just thought it wasn't anything special personally. But I really liked Altered, which is another movie he did, and Lovely Molly was fantastic. This one isn't going to be for everybody, though. It deals with the devil and satanic cults and stuff like that. Uh, but definitely one that I really appreciated, and I hope to see more movies like this from him instead of Blair Witch. Although they have these special features in here, and uh, one of the special features on there definitely reminds me a bit of Blair Witch, the way that they're giving like a backstory. Next up is Mimic. This is the original. I had the trilogy, but I was like, I don't really like the other two films. And so I ended up, um, I can't remember if I traded it or sold it to my friend Tim on here. I hope you're appreciating them more than I do. But I just figured I'm never going to watch those two again. I just wasn't a fan. But the first one I love, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, Resident Evil Damnation. This is the CG animated one. This one is actually really good. Probably better than a lot of the live action ones. But I still do enjoy the first two Resident Evil movies. Crush. This was surprisingly good. Uh, we've seen a lot of movies like this before, Crazy Chick and, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, there's actually another movie called Crush with Alicia Silverstone. Makes me think of that all the time. Zombie Apocalypse, or a 2012 Zombie Apocalypse with Ving Rhames and Taron Manning. This was decent. Uh, it's low budget, but probably one of the better low budget zombie movies that I've seen. And Ving Rhames has been in a few zombie movies recently. Of course, he was in the Dawn of the Dead 
uh, remake, and he was also in one of those other, was it Diary of the Dead? I can't remember. There's That one was terrible, the other one that he was in. Next up is We Are What We Are. This was the original one. I thought the remake was actually pretty decent as well, although uh, kind of contrasting uh, why they were doing it, but I really enjoyed that one. Good cannibal movie. Next up is a double feature of uh, When a Stranger Calls and Happy Birthday to Me. I think both of these deserved a standalone release, and I hope they do get it eventually. This was a great budget buy title, though, from uh, Mill Creek. I think it was like five bucks. And my old friend Pete on here actually hooked me up with this a while back. Uh, definitely missed his videos on here, but both of those are fantastic films. Next up is an animated, crazy, trippy horror movie, uh, Where the Dead Go to Die from uh, Unearthed Films. I know what you did last summer. It's cheesy, but nostalgia for me. Had a big crush on uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar growing up. Idle Hands. This is one I loved the heck out of growing up. A lot of people told me I looked like Devin Sawa. A lot of people told me I looked like a lot of different celebrities growing up, but that Devin Sawa is the only one that I actually saw the resemblance to. Uh, when I was younger, I definitely looked a lot like him. But this one, I was actually disappointed uh, the Blu-ray didn't have some of the special features that the DVD did. Once I saw that the Blu-ray was coming out, I ended up selling my DVD for like a buck. And I really regret doing that because I like the movie a lot and I wish they would have ported over the special features. Next up is Let the Right One In, one of the modern masterpieces. This is one that definitely breaks barriers as far as genres go. It has great elements of uh, suspense, tension, drama, and the young child actors in here were fantastic. Just an all-time classic vampire movie. Next up is Mr. Brooks, one that I think is very underrated. Kevin Costner was super creepy and fantastic in here. Dane Cook, I love what happened to him in there. Uh, William Hurt, Demi Moore, definitely love that one. Magic, this one creeped me out so much as a kid. With, uh, Burgess Meredith and uh, Anthony Hopkins. And uh, Dolls, Ventriloquist Dolls, all those kind of ones definitely creeped me out a lot growing up. Zombie A-Hole, this is a low-budget zombie movie. And it was signed up by the director, Dustin Mills. I thought this was a lot of fun. This is uh, the director's cut version. I do have the DVD, the regular version of it. Next up is Mother's Day, which I was able to get uh, signed up by the director, Darren Lynn Bozeman, right there. And it was also uh, signed up by one of the actresses. I thought this was a decent remake, different than the original one. The original one had like hillbillies and it was kind of like a backwoods thing with the old lady and stuff. I thought this one was definitely a pretty tense movie, the home invasion aspect, uh, and a lot of the acting worked for it. Next up, I was able to get this signed up by uh, Tom Atkins. Very unique signature, My Bloody Valentine 3D, the remake. This is one that definitely grew on me. At first, when I saw it, I was like, eh. But now I love the heck out of it. And then the original My Bloody Valentine, which I think this is actually out of print as well and goes for ridiculous money. This is one of my all-time favorite slashers. Harry Warden, the minor, definitely deserved a full series as well. Hopefully they'll make more movies in the franchise, but I feel like they kind of missed the opportunity and a fantastic Canadian slasher. Next up is Year Next. I thought this was a really good uh, kind of home invasion movie too. Very tense. Even though it was formulaic, it worked well and the lead actress was phenomenal. Next up is Prana 3 Double D. Oh, I love this one. I don't care. Call it a guilty pleasure. I thought it was cheesy fun. And uh, the first one, I the remake, I didn't really love Prana 3D. This one I thought was better. Um, I think they tried too much in the first one, and this one they just kind of was self-aware, and Hasselhoff made this movie for me. He was fantastic in here. Next up is the classic Ed Wood, Plan 9 from Outer Space. This is the black and white and in color version right here. And Last Days on Mars, which is a really cool infected sci-fi horror movie with Liev Shriver. Really enjoy this one. think it's very underrated. The Last Exorcism. Love this movie. I always hear a ton of hate for it, but I think it's excellent, and I love the twist at the end. Kind of reminds me a lot of um, Rosemary's Baby. And the lead actress, Ashley Bell, is phenomenal in here. This is the first movie I remember seeing her uh, in, and she's done a lot of things since then. Very talented, and the contortionist movements in here are super creepy. Next up is, and I also want to say too, I really like the, the concept for it going forward too. Um, with uh, the found footage genre and trying to you know, disprove the exorcism and the whole reality aspect of it and the ending really made it for me. Uh, next up is Let Me In. This is the remake. I really like that slipcover. I believe this was a Canadian slipcover for it. Uh, this is one of those remakes that I thought was unnecessary but still a really good movie and the cast all did a fantastic job in here. And I'm a big fan of uh, Elias Kotis who is a great character actor. He's been around for ages. I remember first seeing him in some kind of wonderful as the character of Duncan, but he was great in here as the detective. 
Next up is Dogs. I really enjoy a lot of these uh, kind of killer dog horror movies. The Breed is one that I really enjoy, kind of like a more recent one. Uh, that one though was kind of basically a ripoff of the 70s, The Pack, which is one that I really enjoy, but now watching it is definitely campy. But uh, I'm a big fan of animal attack horror movies. Next up is Deathbed, The Bed That Eats. Uh, cheesy, but entertaining. Shark Week with uh, Patrick Bergen and Yancey Butler. The Shining, classic, one of the all-time great horror movies. The Signal, this one I think is kind of underrated as well. I don't hear enough people talking about it. The Possession, this one is one that I enjoyed. It was like a more modern uh, horror movie and I thought the cast was decent and it had a couple really creepy moments in there. Predators, um, I'm not loving the cast in this one. I thought it was a good action horror movie. I consider all the Predator movies to be horror. They're aliens attacking and killing people. But Eric Foreman was totally miscast in here. <laughs> uh, next up is The Human Centipede with uh, Ashlyn Yin and Tom Six signed up right there on the front cover. Uh, I thought the concept was more disturbing than the actual movie, but Human Centipede 2 was definitely very disturbing. I still need to see the third one. Next up is Witchboard, which I was able to get this signed up by a bunch of people involved with the film. This is one that I remember liking a lot as a kid, but watching it now, uh, it's not as great as I remember it to be, but still good nostalgia. Next up is A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, which I still need to check out. I've heard rave reviews for it. And I also, uh, Meet Me There, I still need to check out. Picked up both of those at the same time. Need to watch them. Wolfen, I remember watching this a lot growing up as a kid. Great to see uh, Warner Archive Collection putting this out. Housebound, I thought this was fantastic. Kind of reminds me a bit of like Bad Ronald, but uh, this one right here had a great comedic aspect to it. I love a lot of these uh, like New Zealand uh, horror comedy movies that are coming out. I believe this is from New Zealand as well, but love that one. Starry Eyes, this was super creepy and surreal and the lead actress was phenomenal. And love the soundtrack to that too. Late Phases, this one has uh, Nick Demicki and Ethan Embry, a really good uh, werewolf movie. As Above, So Below, I really enjoy the heck out of this one. I would have loved to have seen this movie to be even longer. I'd like to see a sequel. Um, this one was definitely very creepy and atmospheric and claustrophobic. The feeling of claustrophobia in there really is something that stood out. Europa Report, I like this movie, but it really didn't have a ton of horror elements to it. It's more sci-fi. Uh, the ending I really enjoyed, and I kind of wish there was a little bit more to it. I wanted uh, more from it but still very enjoyable. Open Grave is super underrated, and uh, I love Charlotte Copley, great actor, and I don't hear enough people talking about this one. I highly recommend the heck out of this one. I don't wanna give too much away because uh, that's a movie that I think you should just go in there not really knowing anything about. Just skip the trailer and just watch it going in. Really uh, love the progression of it and how it all ties together, especially at the end. Next up is the Supreme Cinema Series release for Bram Stoker's Dragula. Really cool looking edition. I did a full unboxing review of it. It has that plexiglass clear front cover and then the blood dripping down on the spine. And this is one that I watched a lot growing up as a kid too. I'm not a big Keanu Reeves fan, uh, but the rest of the cast did a really good job there. And I love Gary Oldman as Dracula. Gary Oldman, one of the greatest actors out there in my opinion, one of my favorites. So there you go, there is Random Horror Blu-ray Shelf number two. And again, if you've seen these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them.